I'm The Voice, and this is a Divi community-produced video from the Foundation. This is Episode 8, and today we've got Rob, and we've got Neegs, and boy, have we got an update for you. How's it going, guys? It's going good as usual. It's going great. It's going great. Happy to have this new update again. We've got to see you smile, Neegs. You can't even see your talk in there. It's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, the problem is often when I speak, I look down, and when I look down, the camera kind of bugs. I don't know <laughs> it does. how. Like you got this epileptic fit in your right eye. <laughs> <laughs> Rob will lean off to the side halfway through our conversation like he's just yeah. had a stroke or something. So like, I could that? have said something funny and political, but I'll I'll leave it at that. So I just like to <laughs> wink at everyone. Nice. <laughs> anyway, got lots of updates here in the news, don't we? That's right. So let's start with the market update, right? Like everyone yeah. has seen, Bitcoin yeah, yes. had a major drop compared to uh, what we got used to lately. Uh, yeah. Dropped down to 53k. Yeah, we we talked about it, right? We talked about uh, Mongox um, going to start refounding people, so those things started to happen. So maybe we can start with that. Well, actually, we talked about this be even before that, like months ago, like when we started this pod this podcast, we talked about or these updates. We actually talked about sideways moving, moving and pretty big dips. Um, I'm not yeah. saying we predicted this particular dip, uh, but, you know, it, we we absolutely maintain that, uh, you know, it's not all up from here from the having uh, and that we can, you know, that it's not abnormal that there's a big dip. And in fact, I just saw a post about like how we're exactly matching, I think it was 2017, they said, like there's a big dip before it skyrocketed. Um, That's true. We said that yeah. because of the halvening was occurring, plus all exactly. these, other, yeah. these other like earthquakes that were coming. I mean, yeah. it, this was inevitable, I think. Yeah. So I don't, I mean, I, I don't love it. <laughs> you know, there's a little bit of bile at the top of my throat when that was happening, of, of course. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's uh, it's um, I, I think it's in line. It's not out of line. If we drop to like thirty, that would be that would be out of line. Even maybe even forty, that would be out, yeah. outside the yeah. range of what of of what we've seen before. But this drop, I, I think it's matching two thousand seventeen. I think it is. Uh, I have to go check that. But that's that's what I saw. Some I saw some people mapping it on top of each other, and that there's a big you know. It's not weird that there's a big drop before there's a big uh, push. However, you know, here we have causes of, I mean, pretty obvious causes of the drop. Um, yeah. And as we said earlier, the fact that there's ETFs now uh, can accentuate the drops because you got a lot of new people playing and they all have, you know, 10% stop orders on there or whatever. So once it drops, it drops more. Um, so that's, that's another different thing. That's right. Yeah, the market so, is changing, right? Just yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Yep. If we were getting to 48, 49 quickly and then back up, I, I wouldn't be that surprised. But I think we were expecting uh, moves like that, right? Um, we started to talk about that, I think, already two months ago, that mm -hmm. people were excited about Bitcoin ETFs and then Ethereum ETFs. And they thought that it was the time where Bitcoin was going to 100,000 and looking at the previous cycles chart it was it was not looking like that that was going to happen like that it looked like we were definitely waiting for a correction and what's interesting is that when i started uh, in crypto and i started trading assets i i was really thinking that the news makes the market and sure, yeah. and it's funny because in fact now i think it's a little bit the, the other way around like the market moments will come anyway and the the bad news will be highlighted in the time that should be bad and then the good ones will be highlighted in the ones that are like in the bull runs right yeah but you still yeah. have good news and bad news every time it's just the ones that are highlighted that every time um help the market kind of go through the phases that you can actually plan ahead you can plan so, ahead but I, I think, I think part, part of what you said is right, though. I mean, you're talking about the news does make it. I mean, we've had some pretty, well, I, I don't find fear in those things, but you can see where at least new coiners and those that are with exactly. traditional finance, 
will find FUD in the market because of something that's happening, a lot of people ask, why? Why is it down? Why is it this? Why is it that? Why is it up for that matter? And it still comes down to market sentiment and market sentiment is driven by what people read. And I think there's been a lot to read about that's not necessarily feeling positive um, when you've, again, been told, hodl, 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 and somebody mm. says, we're dumping 65,000 Bitcoin, you panic. I mean, that's mm -hmm. just what people do. Of course. But again, you see, like, we weren't hearing about Mongox two months ago. Yeah. But I, wa I was still talking about that drop. Like I, I, I think I talked about that drop. We were in something like April, mid April. So it's not like this wasn't expected. It's just that the news this time that was here to, you know, be with the drop is the Mongox news. Yeah. But if yeah. Mongox news wouldn't have been here, that would have been another news because you needed that <laughs> correction. Uh, there, the yeah, news would have been, been the something opposite. else as an excuse. No, right? the news would have said, oh, this Mongox thing clearing up all of this. Uh, if it was going up, it would be like, oh, now there's clarity on what's happening on Mount Cox. Like it yeah. would, it would, they, yeah. would have twisted the news to be something else because that's happening now. It's all synchronous. So, that, you know, they just they're, they're trying to correlate things which may or may not be correlated. You know, this toy, it might be correlated, uh, but as you said, this should have been priced in since we all knew it was happening. Um, so it is happening. Uh, I think 47,000 Bitcoin was was moved to the books. Uh, that is a right. Lot more, right? Yeah. Moved from That's the gone. cold wallet. So they have uh, cold wallets and here 47,000 Bitcoin have been, yeah. have been moved. Yeah. There are also reports of um, some trustees that says that they've seen some BTC and BCH, so Bitcoin Cash, also moving around uh, from uh, for the clients, for the customers. So mm -hmm. it is actually an interesting point because I think up until now, we only had feedback from uh, people get, getting paid in fiat. So it looks like people are also getting paid in uh, Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, which is a great, which is a great news, right? It means that Mongox is not going to, um, dump everything to be able to send cash uh, all around. Right. So, yeah, I don't know if we mentioned it. Did we mention it on the last call? It was a couple of weeks ago. I thought it happened in between, but I got a message from somebody that um, did we know, and that person mentioned that they received at least some payment uh, based upon what they had in Mt. Gox, but they did receive it in fiat, which... I wasn't quite surprised, but I was surprised since a lot of the conversation, even after we had our last podcast, is is the fact that the courts and everyone was agreeing about distributing the existing Bitcoin that they had, right, to to users. So it looks like there's a little bit of both going on. Um, That's right. That was so interesting. What what I've seen, however, is that there are actually news that are. On one side, uh, as you said, on one side, some that are saying they're being paid in fiat. And then on the other side, we are also seeing some others that are being paid in Bitcoin. And there, are also, uh, there is also another article that is saying that those that are waiting for assets might wait longer than the ones that are waiting for fiat. The, the yeah. problem is I, I was not involved in the Mongox and I, I do not know if they have a specific treatment based on the kind of assets they had, the amount they had, uh, maybe there is a, a difference, right? Maybe if you're below a certain amount, you get you get fiat. I I do not know the details on yeah, that. Yeah, this this the persons that that uh, I had read, this is so this is what they state is that they didn't have many Bitcoin, right? They had um sats of course not not enough for a whole Bitcoin and then they got fiat based upon what that sat sat would be in the market today um yeah they would have uh, of course much rather had i think the bitcoin overall but um yeah yeah so... i guess if they get the actual today's value i mean it's not a big problem right it's not it's not complicated to go and buy back your bitcoin if you really want it right um so 
I, I don't know. Like, like it's, it looks like it's happening slowly uh, and not all at once like people were worried about. So this, it's more evidence that this drop, you know, it may, may just be normal market movements and, you know, people aren't being idiots about just dumping everything that they have. And then maybe they even want the Bitcoin. I don't know if you got a choice, like when you claimed your funds, whether you got one or the other, but um, there's, well, there's other dumping now too. Part of it is also the ETFs, people saying, oh, you know, putting in automatic cells, but also Germany is dumping right now also, right? That's right. Um, so, yeah. um, so following a little bit the articles, I've seen like in the last two, three weeks, probably five or six articles that are a Germany is selling uh, 1.2 million. Germany is selling 5 million. Germany is selling 18 million. So it looks like they're liquidating uh, some Bitcoin that they acquired uh, probably, you know, different ways yeah. for um, government to end up with Bitcoins in hands. And so what I've seen also is that one of the parliamentary there is uh, complaining they're like hey yeah. we should keep that in reserve and so it is interesting of course it, it kind of adds up to uh, the mongox fear that that is there so i thought it was interesting to to bring it's, in in the conversation it's interesting because you know just following up on what you said there isn't agreement even in their own government whatever the positions they hold about how they should sell the bitcoin um that that there was a little bit of anger at how they sold and how they saw the return the person i think maybe we read the same article but that person was uh, expressing it was stupid it's really no different than anybody else who sells in what we would call a distressed situation if you dump if you have big bags right if you dump all your bags all at once you fill orders all the way down. You don't fill orders usually all the way up. That's for buying. So whatever you fill at each level, most people don't realize that. They kind of look at a price and go, I'm going to sell for X. But no matter what exchange you're on, there's little amounts that people will buy at every pricing level. And it, it, it's always going to be less if you dump it all at one time. And I think that's that was the issue but you see that in every uh, in everything if you have a lot of any one thing and you try to sell yeah. all of that one thing you will always take less for it if you sell it all at one time and that's in everything yeah that's so, why i was just having yeah. that conversation with my daughter that's why jeff bezos doesn't actually have 200 billion dollars or whatever whatever it is. no he does not you know no, like right. you know that's all that's all an Amazon stock. And if you sold it all, you know, that it wouldn't be $200 billion. It would be something smaller. Still be a lot, I bet, though. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's right. So That's right. Um, let's move on to uh, the so mining linked, situation. Right? Yeah. Link to that. Yeah. So link to the drop in the Bitcoin pricing. Um, mm -hmm. We see that uh, miners are actually struggling to um, remain profitable in in actually generating Bitcoin, validating yeah. transactions. And so there are many uh, questions that are being asked about uh, how to uh, maintain the, the network while miners are basically not being profitable. So yeah. this is something we always hear when we pass the, um, the halvening, right? And then follows not directly the rise of the price and then we end up in a in a time where miners are not profitable exactly like in the bear market so no. i think we would so, hear about know, that more and more every, as the the yeah. revenue for mining blocks gets lower and lower right i think it will become a problem yeah it's now so now for whatever energy they were spending they were getting you know x uh, Bitcoin, and now those same miners with the same energy are are getting X over two Bitcoin. Uh, so that's like they're getting. So it's it definitely will make it so that people with like worse hardware, for example, or or uh, or different or or different power uh, costs uh, get shaken out. Uh, they have to improve their hardware or leave uh, because this isn't a charity. Um, so that's so that that happens every having. Um, we will see two things happen. We'll see the miners leave and we will also see new machines come online, right? New, that's constantly right. happening, right? So every six months, every year, 
to six months, uh, new hardware comes out that you know puts out even more tera uh, uh, tera hashes. Uh, I think I think we're at tera hashes still. Um, you know per yeah. watt, and uh, because I, I I looked into this for a while and like the maximum the best machines were all you know the the highest producing machines were all producing around five thousand six thousand watts, and that has always been true, and so. Well, I mean, not always, but uh, for the last four or five years, that's always been true. Even though the uh, terawatts, uh, sorry, ted saying watts, the te the tera ha hash, yeah, the hash um, power, yeah, there. yeah, the, right. The hash power has been dramatically increasing um, from right, right, the first because they're looking at yeah, because um, they're basically now they really matured, if I can say it like that, into yeah. really working businesses with the model. And so yeah. obviously they have all their installation to put those miners in uh, in racks, right? In like really yeah. tons of like big installations. So I guess that they have this, you know, technical envelope where they don't yeah. want it to heat like a certain threshold for electricity and then gets the most yeah. the most out There's, of it right so they're they're definitely doing systems engineering but also the machines themselves are getting better um yeah as new chips come out new, oh yeah yeah uh, new, yeah um i think so, that's a concern that new miners often don't don't take into account they're looking at a comp like you know like a website which is saying like hey with this kind of hardware you can make that amount of money because usually they also look at it when it's high and yeah. then they're like hey okay now i'll be able to get my money back in like a year and after it's all profit but then by right. the time by like six months the price is already completely different well, but then there's yeah. also a new machine that comes there's a new yes, machine exactly yeah. and now your numbers go down because as yeah. this machine is now stronger it makes you weaker as part of the network right as a share right. of the network so yeah. right. It is. Uh, it's not easy to the get no, into that. The only thing they had going for a little while was those ordinals. You know, it's three point yeah. one two five per block you've won, right? So you mine that block and all the transactions in it. The last block I just looked at, the total payout was three point one eight nine four zero five six. So it's it was like point zero six plus a little bit more or less. 0.06 uh, Bitcoin, where remember easy, yeah. in when the ordinals were coming out, they were doubling that. The amounts that people were actually really interested in trying to get in first or try to get something going on. And I think this proves the point of utility. Yeah. Regardless of your argument, whether you like ordinals or not, we have an answer, of course, you know, with sidechains kind of a thinking, but the the fact is is that fees that go for functionality and utility can be healthy for a network and those same miners would be earning more in their fees there's nothing wrong with fees you pay for a transaction it keeps the network going keeps them incentivized keeps you safe it also keeps you free so we just don't want to have absorbent fees we want to have reasonable fees but um, yeah, that's gone away. So the the, yeah. the the flash in the pan moment that was ordinals will be offset sometime in the future by something else yeah. that will be exciting. And then people will have a, a week of, of doing whatever that is, whatever that is. And then it'll go back to where it, where it is now. Now, the yeah. great thing about that, there's nothing wrong with the washout of miners or the merging of mining operations which there is that speaking i can't remember the name of the mining company uh they're talking about wanting to merge with some other mining company it's it's the same in any economy if if the value of something isn't representing what your return is per the investment you have in it you you leave or you shut down but what that does is that produces more opportunity for those who maintain, for those who stay, for those who keep going. So they are expecting people to wash out at times. If you have 100 miners and it's not profitable for 100, maybe it's profitable. Maybe it's more than enough profitable for 75 miners. I don't know. I'm right. just throwing out rough numbers. Right. But um, then it's not really necessarily weakening the network. It does have some sort of a hashing effect, but when you're such a big chain like 
Bitcoin, if they lost, you know, 30% of their miners, would that really make a difference? I think the answer is no. I think that yeah, they just I, move, I, right? I think the they bigger the I think the bigger issue is not so much miners per se. Uh, in if the if the idea was that there's individual miners, I think the the big issue is that there's two pools that make up fifty two percent of the network, and it's the yeah. pools that are making people nervous. Um, and there's also there's a second aspect to that. Uh, we can come back to the pools an, another time. In fact, I, I was just having a conversation with this guy. Uh, who works at the Fed. <laughs> uh, turns out a friend of mine from when I was younger works there. Uh, but he was, And he was asking about the pools. I have to leave the back. call. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, right. Yes, yeah, right. And he's spying us on us now. Yes. Sorry, I have friends I haven't talked to in 10 years that happen to work there. Um, but uh, anyway, um, but the, the whole issue around mining and making sure mining is a profitable entity is that obviously that's where the security comes from um and the fees are important uh and the, fee, the fees become more and more important as the reward drops uh each time uh and of course there's no reward at some point in the future um and so fees are what has to keep miners interested that's uh one of the things that came out this week was about uh somebody was their solution to the to the idea that we might lose miners going forward because it's not profitable is to have a hot hodl tax personally i think it's the dumbest idea i've ever heard i don't even think it's implementable <laughs> like any of those things but the idea is that is that hey you you hodlers have to have to do work also and I just think the whole thing is misguided. I'm only bringing it up because there's a lot of noise on the on social media about this article, which appeared in Bitcoin Magazine. It wasn't, it wasn't like some dude like had a tweet. It was a whole long article defending the idea of a hodl tax uh, programmed into the network. <laughs> and yeah, you're laughing, but he was serious. Lots of people think it's a good idea. No, <laughs> More it's, people think, it, yeah. forcing <laughs> long-term holders to subsidize miners. Oh, it's a wealth tax. It's exactly like, it's like Elizabeth Warren wrote it. Like, yay, another thing I can get from the rich guys. Oh, <laughs> you know, I agree it's, completely. Yeah. It's, it's, well, <laughs> it, it just, it, and it doesn't really, it says long time holders. Yeah. As in you and me could be yeah. considered long time holders, yeah. hodlers. What do we yeah. teach everyone to do? We've, oh, I've stressed this now at least on three calls that we've had. We're told to hodl it. Start using it. We're told mm -hmm. to hodl it. Yeah. Then now we're punishing people who are doing with what we've asked them to do, what miners yeah. sell right. into. Miners want you to do nothing but hodl it. They want yeah. you to buy more. Yeah. This doesn't make yeah. sense. Let them Meanwhile, die. The if they are, aren't are, profitable, yeah. let them die. Let no. them go out of business. Yeah. This is the way the natural effect in the economy happens. Let them melt. I don't care sell their stuff right, at a loss to some other miners. I think this is only short term, right? Because so what they were raising, um, thank you for sharing. You, you shared also that tweet from uh, this person. I can't remember the name, but they also brought a few, um, some context to the situation. And I, I think it is interesting, right? Like what they were saying is that even if you have some uh, miners that drop, uh, at the end of the day, if, the the reward will keep dropping and you will have you will have a major issue right and let's say let's even talk about after the emission is completely released right yeah and so now it's only relying on fees okay so what they were saying was basically that bitcoin was intended to be used um like a normal currency and so have Correct. a tons of small transactions constantly all day long right and so that would generate a constant influx of fees Correct. and that would be um that would be a, a system that would be sustainable right but what we see on bitcoin is more like there is just a little use or there is like very intense heavy use and for that it is not working very well of course when it's very heavily used the miners are very being very happy but of when course. it's not when it's more it's count, time i mean let's be clear more most of the market most of the moves that are happening in 
as cryptocurrencies today do not happen on Bitcoin. They happen on other networks, right? And so that is uh, definitely having an impact. And yeah, so I, what that I, I person was you, saying, other networks. yeah, what that person was saying was that basically they will either have to have this kind of wealth tax. I like that you called it like that. Um, or it will have to have some more emission that it's actually currently having. So probably some decision about um, the end of the 21 million Bitcoin, which seems impossible to imagine, right? Or it would have to have some scaling solution. I do believe that the DV sidechain are good uh, in that in that situation, right? I do believe I that yeah. we could definitely uh, offer some good opportunity to Bitcoin um, to have better, like some transactions that go through the sidechain and then have some possibility. I mean, we most likely wouldn't be developing the ones that would be sharing any fees with the Bitcoin miners, but it is the technology that we bring definitely off, yeah. like, offers this possibility, right? Well, so that's a good segue because that's exactly what I was thinking about is that it comes down to utility features and functions, but you also have to make it to where people are interested in using those utility features and functions. If you can build out what people are interested in and still use your, your cryptocurrencies for those features, functions they incentivize miners validators you know a, a, a blend of what those are miners are validators but then they are incentivized to keep mining i want to go back to this article where i say yes there is a process there is a protocol there is a technology it is not just a concept but that can fix that we know what that is and 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 that can be something that is is beautiful and can be applied the, the situation they're in is a situation that those diamond hands, those orange eyeballs, they caused this. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Because the the way that Bitcoin has evolved is, is we're, it's pretty far from the original idea where it's an economy that everybody can participate in. It's Correct. not and hasn't been for a while. Um, and so that's why I... That's why I and I think all three of us have maintained that there will always be alternatives in the same way. It's like there's other normal currencies and there's the dollar. There's uh, there's always another way. There's there's Amazon. If you don't like it, there's a few other ones like it's not there should you're not be stuck with it. Yeah. And there should be. And there always will be. And, and so Satoshi the idea, mentioned that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, the, so the, the idea this that may not work. One, yeah. The, the one coin to, ru ru coin to ru rule them all is not right. Um, certainly not one network to, ru ru uh, to rule them all. Um, but I do think uh, th there is definitely a concern because, you know, the interest of the miners is, is maintaining the mining is maintaining the security. Yeah. Uh, the, the profitability of mining is, is inherent part of the security. And the whole HODL tax idea was to maintain security. Um, so I get that. However, I just think... Putting the pressure, it's the same thing in oil, right? So there's uh, the reason why, why people thought there was peak oil in the 70s is because it was, it, it was relatively hard to get the easy oil. Well, they developed technology to get the harder oil, and then they refined that technology, got the even harder oil. Um, you know, first it was the way they drilled, then the horizontal drilling. Like there's all this new technology that made uh, the oil just keep on flowing. It's going to be the same here, and I'd rather that model be followed rather than you know, t you know, reducing the wealth of people that are just holding the asset. Um, it's on the miners to keep pursuing better technology, making their miners better, making their systems better. Uh, you, that's that's what we want. We want everything to get more efficient as it goes forward. We want them to be profitable and be the ones doing that work and to get paid that. Uh, putting the onus on everyone else isn't that's government work. That literally is correct. Oh, now there's a gas tax. Like that's that's everybody. That's that is not the game we should be playing at all. And encourage um, encourage your you encourage your your holders. Encourage your retailers. Your you got an accent there. Encourage encourage your holders, yeah. hodlers. Encourage your retailers to accept. People need to use their crypto. This is, yeah, that's just do, what it comes down to. Let yeah. me do the devil's advocate for a second. Um, yeah. So most of the Bitcoin holders, so 
I'll just I'll just take a step back for a second. Mm -hmm. The initial idea is to have a network that is a user's network, right? A peer-to-peer -peer network with mm -hmm. user totally in control of their transactions and the, the network. And so most of the holders of Bitcoin are not doing that, right? And so they definitely benefit from a network they benefit from the security that is brought by the miners because now they can hold their coins in complete security, but they're not paying anything. Yeah. Right? So in a way, I think that you could defend attacks on holders. No, they're helping provide... I'm leaving this call now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's like I told you, I'll do the devil's advocate. <clears throat> no, I Just understand that. No, but what are they doing? Sense. They're not doing anything. Everybody's got to keep a complete copy. A miner has to keep a complete copy of the ledger. They, they, it, it doesn't really add to anything for them to keep that complete copy of the ledger. It's always going to be there. It's always fixed. They have to do that. So... You're asking them to do something. Or you're asking people to pay for something they have to do anyway. And, and that has to be done so you can check to make sure transactions haven't been spent before, that, it's, that it is Bitcoin or whatever cryptocurrency you're talking about. You have to have the immutability and the history um, of those coins all the way back if you need to, all the way back to the genesis block of the blockchain. They have to do that. This is just whining and complaining. I have no. No, sympathy. but that's. I don't think you answered the, the question. I believe so. What I'm trying to say is that if if there are people that are at loss making this network run, right, mm -hmm. and then there are people who are basically using the network because, in fact, if you're holding, you're actually using the network, right? Because like that's how your your money is there. Because you're not doing anything for the network. Because some people keep it running, right? I mean, so, you're not doing anything for the network. And in fact, you don't need No, you're not a, doing anything. So you, you're benefiting from people that are keeping this network alive, right? And so what I'm saying is that those people, look, what's interesting is in one of the proposal that I mentioned was continuing emission. Continuing emission is a tax on everybody. It's exactly That's the true. same. It's just it's just a different form right but it, it is difficult like if you're not able to make the network sustainable then you will have to compensate one way or the other so i, I understand they break the question i don't like either the tax on holders i think that you have a major problem if you get there but but i think it was interesting to entertain the, the thought. I, I think i think they are providing the, the a feature i mean i'm not going to say it's the it's like the fee you get from a transaction, but they're keeping it off the market. Like they, like if they, if everybody just sold what they have, then Bitcoin's worth zero. So the fact that that they're <laughs> holding it is providing value to the to the entire network to everybody, including yeah. the miners. And that's what they've been told again: hodl it, keep it off the network. It limits what's available on exchanges, and that helps support the price right that's some simplistic economic principle that if somebody wants something and there's not enough they're willing to pay more for it in a way so it reverses that downward pressure but i don't know if that's the answer i no, I, I think, think it's I think just about becoming think, go ahead it's market dynamics that is totally the answer that's yeah. the the demand is is a slowly rising more than the than the supply rises sure. um and that causes the price to rise i mean that's that's basic economics that's like the first day in economics um <laughs> so certainly goes up and down but if they didn't hold if people didn't hold this that that wouldn't happen this, this is all peaceful there's no military nobody forcing anybody to do it, anything right if nobody yeah. wanted it and they all and they kept selling it and they were willing to sell it for nothing all the way down to nothing you're right there would be exchanges that that may have people who own coins on them that are at zero value um yeah we know you know i mean know, that's, we, we know that's how that works in like somebody would other, be stuck with some coin right yeah that's how it yeah. is in every coin including divi right now right so sure we divi was unable to match that same supply and demand dynamic 
um, and Divi and for 95%, 99% of the other coins, even Cardano, Polkadot, they're all, they all have the same problem. They're unable to match their emission rates with, with the, the demand. Bitcoin is the exception. And that's the reason holders of Bitcoin or any coin shouldn't be taxed. Like they're already providing their functionality. Yeah. Right. So right now, it's right. also the reason so why we're coming up with utility. Would change. <laughs> like if Bitcoin sustain at like 30 or 20K for a year or two, then you might feel like people who are not securing the blockchain, but then holding are give, like having a role. But I would think that now they're just going to lose the network completely. Because yeah, but then, I don't think that that would happen. So, so we're we're talking about we're talking about the Carrington effect for the Earth. We're talking about a meteor coming and crashing and destroying human life. Bitcoin can be supported by people running fully indexed nodes. The issue is is the transactions. You need to have somebody willing to mine transactions. At a certain right. point in time somebody anybody is going to be willing to mine transactions so in the extreme it's unrealistic to think about this it is so unrealistic because of the willingness of people to mine bitcoin pool mine bitcoin or even spin up a pool so others can mine on your pool the willingness of people to do this there will always be people willing to secure the chain and and i i think that the fact that people run full nodes I run a full node. That doesn't mean it's a mining node, but it's a fully indexed node on the network. I do it to support Bitcoin, um, just like I do for Divi, right? So I run a fully indexed validator, for, and it's a fully indexed node to support Divi <clears throat> and several other chains. There will always be people that are willing to do that. This conversation is speaking about such an anomaly, such something out on the far end of the probability spectrum that I think, I don't know, it's just a waste of time, not being rude, but the fact that somebody wants a HODL tax is laughable to me. It's not going to get there. I think if there is a per point in time where the emission per block, even in the next year or two, where there's too many miners, some are going to have to either cut the fat some are going to have to upgrade hardware. Some will drop out. Some will merge. And then that finds that economic balance. Satoshi said that from the beginning. I think, so, side <laughs> note here. One of the things, there's a movie coming out that everybody should watch. It's, it's slowly making the rounds called Dirty Coin. Uh, a friend of mine uh, mm -hmm. put that together. Uh, and the entire point of Dirty Coin is like, it's not, what we're seeing uh, is is mining in two forms one is somebody has this giant you know warehouse filled with miners and they're all buzzing along and yay uh yeah. and then the other is uh, there's a bunch of you know there's individual miners who point their uh hash power at a pool most people just know about those but there is a growing important and growing uh opportunity uh for a different kind of mining, which is you're selling not just the mining, but you're selling the utility of the mining equipment, which is you're selling heat or you're selling um, uh, stability. So for example, uh, if you've got a hydro jam dam in the middle of Africa supplying a little tiny village, the usage, the use of that power goes up and down with day and night or whatever. And turning Bitcoin miners on and off to accommodate that such that all the power is being used at all the time um, allows a hydro dam to be uh, allows the dam to be fully utilized uh, all the time. So there's money being made for the village and there's uh, and the village gets all the power they need. Um, that is that is super useful, especially yeah. as we go to this paradigm most a lot that I hate of uh, wind, water, uh, wind, water, solar, uh, wind, water, sun to power things when you can't control as it goes up and down miners when it's when there's too much power miners can be there producing stabilizing the network uh and then they get turned off that's a lot of capital but yeah it can last a long time the other one is uh industrial heat um so there are tons of processes uh that require industrial heat within the range of bitcoin miners usually it's like fruit drying timber drying 
uh, things like that. But there's other ones, too. Uh, so they've got heaters. They've just got things in there, either burning fossil fuels or burning electricity just to heat. Whereas you can route that energy through miners and subsidize and make a win-win situation. So the key is we, we the miners need to be creative on, on what they're selling. Uh, so, so they, they're, I know they're being you've, rewarded you've for reading a lot cash. about that. Yeah. So how do you get around the, um, you know, we talked about earlier that the short life cycle of those uh, mining machines, right? Because they very quickly get outdated and not profitable anymore. So how, mm -hmm. how does it get around that in a static infrastructure that... If they're, if they're sized right, when I was looking at it, if they're sized right, like I did a model for after the, this past happening and I got it working. Uh, you know, if you... Like these heating things are... Let's put it this way. The, the single miner puts out five, 6,000 watts of heat. A heating uh, manufacturing plant that requires heating may require 100,000 or 200,000 watts of heat. So you, you put many of these together and create a, heat, a heating system for this. And at that point, the payback's about a year. Um, so as long okay. as you can get like 20 or 25 of them together, the, the payback becomes a single year. So I assume um, you keep it 24-7. Of course, yes. Yeah. And that's what yeah. is good about heating, especially if it's continual heating. You're right. Batch heating is is a problem, uh, and you have to work out the mechanics for that. Um, greenhouses, they use uh, Bitcoin miners for, but you don't use it for half the year. So then you have a capital problem. Yeah. So you have to create the right model for this. But in general, you can get payback in one or two years. Um, and and uh, yeah, about one or two years. Yeah. Now, these are still and mining so, to a pool. Um, they, I think if you're deploying this much heat, you can just be your own pool. I don't, I don't think. Well, it's, yeah, you uh, can, you'll have your own yeah. pool and you'll yeah. mine to your own pool, but it's still pool Correct. mining. Yeah. So yeah, I just, yeah, clarifying. totally. Yeah, totally. Um, and then you can invite other people to your pools. I mean, like that's yeah. fine too. Uh, but yeah, with that many Bitcoin miners, uh, you know, so my, oh, the other last one I left out is flare gas. So, uh, in the entire oil industry, uh, at, in the, at the refineries, uh, all, all the product doesn't go into all the in, input doesn't become product and they flare off what's not used. And it's, it's got, cra it's got crappy gas in it. There's a lot of methane in it and they, they, they have to flare it off and it's just that energy is wasted. So now people are putting, uh, combustors and generators at the end of those flare pipes, uh, and using that to uh, power uh, Bitcoin miners. And instead of flaring methane, which is worse for the environment than, than the carbon dioxide, it, the carbon dioxide goes out instead. It's a marginal improvement, but there's energy there and yep. they can put Bitcoin miners on it. So that's these are the activities that need to be pursued by miners and they completely decentralizes the mining the offset of power. The cost, right? Like now it's totally. not only the price of Bitcoin. That, that's interesting. Yes. The other thing that I wanted to ask because, um, I expect it is kind. Of, it has this kind of mechanism, but in proof of stake coins like DV, um, the um, the difficulty will basically adapt, right? Like it will adapt. It will right. try to stay uh, close to a minute, and so I would assume it's the same on Bitcoin. So it if is. there were yeah. if there were less people or not more improvement of hardware, basically the Bitcoin difficulty would adapt to that. It is. It is. It's a little yeah. bit longer and further out. I think ours is, which is why you see such a dynamic difference. Ours is per block. I think theirs is per every two weeks. Uh, okay. Somebody could correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. I, I don't remember everything I've learned over the years, but I think it's every two weeks. Um, so yeah, it, it will positively. In, so if you have less miners, then the difficulty will adjust. It'll make it profitable for those miners. In fact, it'll end up being more profitable because there's less competition. There's, And what I mean by that is there's less people in the pool competing with you. So it doesn't automatically mean you'll earn more, but it means you'll have more opportunity and it'll be geared, the difficulty will be geared based upon the amount of participants that are there. The end result is, is if there's only so many slices of pizza available in one day, if there's less people trying to buy or less people trying to take a piece, if there's eight pieces in a slice and you have 12 people, well, somebody's not getting some today. But if you end up where you have seven, 
somebody might get an extra one. So the less less participants means more opportunity for those who are still working yep. towards the goal of securing the chain. Nice, nice. Anyway, that was a lot about mining. That was right. fun, though. Enough, <laughs> enough about low prices. So actually, um, I also wanted to bring that. That's kind of related. But despite those prices and despite the kind of more um, – more questions, like the times that are more questions on the market. Uh, we yeah. see that um, <clears throat> VCs are still very interested. Uh, projects are raising money left and right. Um, so, of course, it's mostly centered around AI and, you know, uh, the, new, um, the new things. But uh, definitely we see that the, the movement around, still around Bitcoin and Bitcoin interoperability and all that does have uh, some traction. So um, it is still interesting to see that uh, despite those times that people who are investing are still, are still around. Well, this yeah. was a long intro about the market, but I think, I think I enjoyed it. I like talking about mining. I like talking about, you know, opportunities like that. I think everybody should be interested, but we have one goofy thing that I wasn't even aware of that I was surprised by in the news. If you guys don't mind me digressing, Sony's exchange. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> Who would have thought? Or what? It makes sense, though. <laughs> yeah, right? Does it? I In think what so. Way I mean, if sense? you're looking at Web3 I mean, good for them. tokenization and NFTs, and you're going to put it in your PlayStation, this is yeah. this is more Jeff's area, right? I mean, if we yeah. start talking about Jeff, you know, that's that's his desire is is to do things with gaming, and his desire to do things with um with NFTs, but it's kind of cool that they're doing that. It's Web3 related. So it'll be some EVM, some tokenization, some, you know, level of, of that kind of technology. It won't be an exchange like a Coinbase where they have Bitcoin probably, but it'll be Web3 related. Yeah, no, um, I love it. I yeah, love I think it's kind of fun. A real, like a company that's been around forever, it just is getting, is buying an exchange. Like I would absolutely trust that. <laughs> way more than FTX, way more than Coinbase, he way more than Sony. crypto. Yeah, we have way more than people who came up through the crypto markets to create exchanges. I would definitely trust that much more than that. I'm not was, saying right. So let me. Know, I'm not telling everybody to go do you that. Down a right? second. But no, it's you know great. that Sony has been victim of several breach of very sensitive data including source codes <laughs> and all that <laughs> did you know that look yeah I i'm, I'm that. most interested in their disclosure that it's a public blockchain network not an open source blockchain network but a public blockchain <laughs> right so here it doesn't seem that they're really <laughs> looking for that or that's i mean I don't, I don't know, but what it looks like is more that they want to develop a bunch of things that are around crypto and they don't want to use Bitcoin or use anyone else. It seems nope. that they want to use their own service and it seems that this exchange uh, does feed into their strategy. But it is definitely interesting. They're not starting from scratch. They're buying an exchange that was already um, existing, which is called Whalefin. Yep. It's a small it's a small thing, but yeah, that's interesting. Look, they're, they're Renamed the S blocks. They're, yeah, they're, <laughs> they're a business, and people want to make you know businesses want to make money. The people are making money in crypto. I, I like it's a that from that angle, it makes total sense for a, a company to do it. I just think like uh, and granted, yeah, they they're probably going to have some security issues. They are probably going to be a huge source of of attacks. Um, you know because they're a well-known company. Um, I hope that I, I hope that works out. I think it'll be good if if normal companies enter the market. I, I'm happy about right. it. I, no, I, I I agree. I agree. I think yeah. it's a great mm -hmm. step towards adoption. Right. Yep. Definitely. wasn't Wasn't the uh, the blockchain that was at least it was in the news for the longest time was was um, oh, it was it was the guy that you wrote that article to Theta. The silver, the silver guy, um, Bix, Bix, uh, Bix was a yes. big fan of Theta. Yes, yeah, I'm surprised yeah. they didn't use the Theta network for this, but instead they've gone private. So that's interesting yeah. that they've done yeah. that. Yeah, I'm well, sure let's... they've hired people that were experienced, and then they, you know, 
started a, a division in their big company. Totally. Probably. They have plenty yeah. of money. So um, I, I think that they prefer <clears throat> to have full control, which is yeah. understandable, which is for a company this size. Exactly. It makes sense to me. It makes so sense let's talk me. about regulation, more regulation. Yeah. It is the <laughs> no, year of I regulation, right? That's our favorite there. part. <laughs> yeah. I th and I think that's the, that's also a sign of more adoption, right? Like we're seeing yeah. regulations left and right. And that's, I think that's the maturation yep. of yep. Um, so blockchain, we got a couple blockchain of getting things here. the economy. Yeah. The first is that the, I guess there's actually a vote to overturn the Biden's veto that if that gets groundswell, I, a I'd be surprised. Yeah. But B, wow! I mean, that'd be that'd be pretty shocking. That that would be a message even from his own constituents. Um, like that'd be amazing. Uh, well, well, I believe it when I see it. Of course. So I mean, there's not much to say on that. It hasn't I messed happened. those up. Which <laughs> this was the SAB, not the FIT, yeah, the, right? So this right, is the right. SAB. It's the one he vetoed because it was basically. Um, realigning the powers of the sec and you know correct it wasn't a surprise he he vetoed it now speaking of sec uh looks like coinbase uh is going to the <laughs> courts to get access to gensler's personal emails um which surprise. i think is freaking hilarious <laughs> <laughs> so, that's right so yeah, yeah. he asked for that uh, they asked for that and then uh, the sec answered that um it is a private matter and they're not supposed to have um, you know, private emails, they're trying to put pressure on. So uh, ah. basically Coinbase decided to fight against it and they're they're asking for that. So we'll see what will be the ruling, but whatever the that, court that says. could definitely yeah. be interesting. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think we should spend that much time on this because it's really a lot of speculation, but but right. it makes it's sense. Just funny. Like if if he, yeah, if he's got if he's got emails that are that talk about the regulation and the different companies and so forth, absolutely. Those should be part, you know, like his personal opinions, because he's got so much power in this. Uh, right. I, I think that's part of it. That should be part of the uh, the evidence or whatever. That's um, right. But yeah, I guess it we'll could see. show a bias. And yeah, I mean, exactly. assuming the, the best outcome, it could show a yeah. bias or it could show like directly some other organization that happens outside okay. of his uh, business email. And that would be a... Uh, the end yeah. for Mr. Gensler, obviously. Yeah. yeah. And well, speaking of that, also, um, so this Chevron case happened. Talk about the end That's of right. something. <laughs> That's right. So I gotta tell you, when I first read about the Chevron case, uh I I didn't make the link to crypto. Um I thought it was weird. Um, but it's definitely it's definitely more I understand now. It took me a while, but I understand now why what the impetus behind it is, you know, I didn't understand. It was basically Congress kind of like in making high level things and saying, hey, you guys in the in the bureaucracies, you you work it out. You we're authorizing you to work it out. And that's that was a court case. That's the Chevron court case, how that how where the authority actually comes from. So it gave a ton of power to the to the various administrations, the that, institutions. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that, an that institution make things could happen. decide yeah. a rule yeah. if it's it kind of looks like it is uh, attached to the law, right? And yeah. and now it was definitely decided yeah. that no, it's what's right. written in the law and that's it. And if they want to pass anything, they will have to go through Congress. And no, I so get that the outrage because the it, impact the is idea huge. Is that, yeah, it is. But I get the outrage. I understand the outrage. I don't say I, I side with it, but the idea here is that you know the the politicians voting on on stuff aren't experts in any of the stuff, and the idea is that uh, you know before this Chevron case, the idea is that the people at the EPA, the people at the SEC, the people at the ATF, they know what they're talking about, right? Yeah. They, they're focused on these things, and they're the ones, therefore, who should be kind of reg uh, uh, delegating and regulating. The famous experts. What, what's what? <laughs> right. The famous experts, right? And then, and then, what happens is you create these little power structures—the exact thing that right. we don't want anywhere—and right. that's exactly what they what they put an end to. And this is what we're seeing in crypto. So now, because you know, you we've all seen that video of asking, you know, Gary, you know, is Ethereum, you know, a, a commodity, and he wouldn't answer it, right? And that's right. those are the people who have all the power. This should, or you know, goes towards. Ending that, we'll see. 
again, like I think a worse than that. Us, you know? So yeah. I think that um, agencies like the SEC or the ATF or whoever were writing articles like they were the mm -hmm. Supreme Court, right? They were like, hey, yeah. we understand that this law says that and this is the framework and it has been like that for a long time and now now this is over yeah. so it is yeah. um it is very interesting i think it's a great it's a great thing i understand what you say right where mm -hmm. um obviously the the legislators they're not experts but i think this is also um like a topic of democracy right democracy is yeah. a lot harder or the rep republic exercise is a lot harder than if you have a dictatorship or a centralized yeah. authority who can just uh, yeah. take decisions and organize very easily. And so that's, um, that's what we see. It's funny because you, you have a parallel with, um, with crypto, right? The more mm -hmm. convenience you get, the less sovereignty you have. And it is the same with the government, right? And so mm -hmm. this ruling forces the experts to now go and explain to the legislators so that they can actually write very precise laws that have the full context of it. And of course, it means that it would have to evolve more often. Uh, it would have to go more in depth. But I, I guess it's also the price to pay if you want a quality, a quality law, right? Well, that, so. that's a theory. I, I doubt that's going to happen either. I, I don't think. I don't think any part of the process is going to be Just don't more regulate. Efficient or and that's yeah. good. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, so the the holes that will now exist are holes that we can we can use. We, I mean, people can use uh, to actually, you know, take opportunities and, and do better uh, inside the economy. Like, that's you know, right. I, I definitely when I, was, when I first saw it, I was like, Ugh. but now I'm I'm uh, yeah, I'm all definitely all for it. Um, not all for it. I, there's going to be change. Uh, I don't want to go back. But I just don't have faith that like this is solving some huge problem and everything's going to get better. They're just going to write more omnibus bills um, and try to cover swaths of the economy, of the regulatory part of the economy with bigger words. It's, it's kind of like how you write a patent. Like you try to be as broad as possible and that's what they're going to do. And it's going to make it really hard to read anything to know. I think it's still going to be hard to know what's legal and what isn't, but I guess we'll see. And, and I have to share that reaction from that guy, yeah. Seberg. I don't know where he's coming from, but I saw that in yeah. an article. And the guy was yeah. basically complaining that um, this whole thing is the way they get bipartisan um, compromise on law. They basically mm -hmm. write the law as ambiguous as possible. And then, right. uh, the, then the institutions will be able to have like everything, like they would be able to interpret the, the law at will. And so it right. makes them like it gives them a lot of freedom. And so when I read that, I was like, "Oh, you complain about that? I think it's much better." It's uh, I understand how it can be more practical, but I think yep. ambiguous law is the most dangerous law. It's right? the worst. Like, exactly. It totally. Yeah. It totally. And I, I'm with you about just don't have the regulations. Just leave the holes open. And if people right. are harmed inside those holes, then there's liability. And if there's not somebody harmed, then it's not actually a problem. Um, so <laughs> that's right. That's, that's really what the issue is there. Anyway, let's, uh, talk about, let's wrap up with some stable coins. Um, right. So it's the EU. So the EU, yeah. um, deployed the framework, um, MICA, M-I-C-A, I don't know how you call that. It's, um, EU markets in crypto assets and it's a regulation for stable coins. And basically stable coins have to apply there and they have to make sure that they comply with their dysregulated framework. And so it is, um, it has just started on July 1st, so last week. And basically, if you are in EU and you hold uh, coins that are not supported, I would assume it's any other than USDC or USDT. Um, I would uh, encourage you to look into it if you have other uh, stable coins, but basically you're not, you're not allowed to hold those uh, stable coin officially now if you are in EU. I serious. Holy I you see that's shit. a news article that I did not read. That's concerning. But when you're talking about stable coin, they're centralized. All right. stable coins are centralized. Yeah. Even even the ones that are programmatic, there is some effect of them that are are centralized. Some all the way, some a little less. That means you have. Well, forget. I was just going to say that it doesn't matter. 
it means you have censorship probabilities that will always be probable, uh, especially if they're EVM related or any blockchain that has EVM. There is a possibility, which means a probability of censorship. And so, yeah, that really stinks. I think that's a bum deal for people. Of course it is. I don't know. That's, <laughs> the, the, that's, depre their that's job depressing. Is to empower for me. the government. I mean, that's their job. Uh, so that they yeah. can so you implement control in order to help the people, right? That's that's their thing. Yeah, we were um, talking about that earlier. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's it's the entire modus operandi. Um, it's pretty. That's it's nuts. And now they're just now they're making coins illegal. That's our tokens illegal. That's that's what you're telling me. That's right. That's so crazy. it is um, not. It's not the first time they make coins, you know, banned there, but it seems that now they want them to follow a specific framework. And I yeah. mean, let's be clear, right? EU is um, extremely totalitarian in the way it wants to control everything. And I think it's just, it's just going that direction, right? So, of course, just stable coins We're are... We're trying to stay, stay <laughs> apolitical here, so... <laughs> no, wow. I'm just talking factual, no, right? Like it, it, right? Effectively, right. it is it is in their kind of um, <laughs> reason of being, right? It it is about making sure that it control all aspects of the Euro European Union. But it just really stinks. Anyway, at the end of the day, it's also that the stable coins are probably the ones you can hit the easiest, right? It's all centralized. Um, you have centralized entity that you exactly. can directly go to and be like, hey, now you follow that framework or you have fines or whatever. So I guess it is, um, it is a path for them to go there. And let's talk about the CBDC, right? Our favorite topic. Um, <laughs> yeah. The stable coins are probably the biggest threat to the CBDC, right? That's true. That's true. They are. They would be. If, if your base is more interested in using some external party as opposed to your official coin, and they never use your official whatever it is, your CBDC, and they're wanting, let's say, something else, that affects your economy, right? The, you're, you're looking at one thing, and yet everybody else is doing something else. I call that freedom of choice, right? <laughs> but, but to a government, yeah. That's, yeah, this is the that's not acceptable. Age old game of their mono of, uh, quest for monopoly powers over certain things, uh, yeah. and this is one of them. Uh, so, right. yeah, it's not not weird. It just sucks. I think it sucks. Exactly. I mean, it means that it means we're stuck. While you know, if this gets broadly used, because the way I'm seeing it is, it's the European exchanges that have to comply with this, and now and they're also in that article you posted. They're also saying, well, don't use non-regulated exchanges i mean that's that's how they're doing this um that's so right. people will use non-regulated exchanges to get the other coins or move the other coins um but that's just the normal way that they do this like you know it's a you know you got to use this it's illegal to use anything else and now people are just you know doing illegal things for it without being harmed or harming other people it's not actually saving anyone it's yeah, and EU with its vast oh. blows and like several mm -hmm. regulations that came around crypto has actually proven to be worse than US. So right. it is that's uh, true. It will be interesting to see how it evolves. Yep. Well, I'm I'm done with news and updates. Yeah, and I'm, I'm depressed. That's right. Let's move on. Let's that's talk right. about we've been we've been on this marketing. too long. <laughs> yeah, that's good <laughs> actually. Marketing. So let yeah. us know if you want less news or if it. If you actually like it, uh, I think it was or, yeah, great that for would us be great. to talk about a lot of things. That would be great. Yeah. Make those yeah. comments. Uh, yes. I mean, obviously, if you put them on Twitter, there's a lot of there's a lot of updates that come on Twitter. If you put them on the segments on YouTube or on Twitter, that's great. If you put them on the YouTube channel, wherever you are, make sure you like, subscribe, repost, right. share, especially on YouTube to thumbs up those and comment on those. That does help the algorithm. We're all in this together. We'd like to see people see more about Divi Foundation, Divi Project, all the, the things that we're talking about. But I think now we're going to sort of move into another topic. So I just want yeah, a quick reminder, right everybody, on. thumbs up Open your the videos, video in please. five tabs and all that. Do, yep. do everything. <laughs> yes, please. Do <laughs> yeah. everything. So yeah. this is a um, <laughs> it all helps. It, help, it helps, uh, it helps uh, the listeners also. I, I was looking at uh, Alex Finn's stuff. I, I, have a, I have a low 
threshold of, of consuming his his output. But uh, I mean, his point is replying to stuff and, and liking stuff, you know, helps the algorithm point at you also. Um, it does. So, and so, you know, it's in your benefit to interact with stuff if you want to, you know, if you want to grow the number of people that are seeing your stuff. So it's it's better for you if you interact with our stuff and vice versa. And I think it fits well of it with the next topic, which is um, the marketing. follow up on marketing. So mm -hmm. we, we brought that topic a few times. We'll bring it again until we yep. have all the articles out. And again. I think, yep. Rob, you already wrote another article, but I don't think it's out yet. Is oh, it? it is. I posted it. I don't think we've pushed it. It's it's definitely published. Um, That's right. So, there, so there's two yep. articles right now. And the first one's kind of introductory. Goes over, I mean, I didn't know this a couple of years ago. I still think most people don't know this, but 98, 99% of what you see out there influencers, the airdrops, the the telegram channels, the signals channels, all that stuff. Yeah. People are, people are paying for that. People are paying to to get the their stuff into your eyeballs. Um right. and there's <clears throat> there's companies that uh, you hire, they have, you know, they provide all of these different services, uh, everything from website building, but more importantly, you know, directing your message into influencers who talk like, you know, they just found out this cool thing, but <laughs> you paid them. Um, and I think that's why a lot of people are balking at that polka dot thing, which we didn't talk about in the news, but that's freaking hilarious. No, right? that's, that's um, because it's related right? to this, right. I think, right? Yeah. That's yeah. Right. So, Right, so the marketing list from Polkadot got leaked. I think they spent five million dollars, and you can see the crypto influencer list that's on there, and you can see all the the smarmy marketing angles that they paid for that people just assume is like the influencer talking honestly about Polkadot or whatever. Correct. That's that's what it is, and that's what everything that you see, all the influencers you you listen to and watch and so forth. Yes. You're learning. Yes, they're providing you this with this stuff. Let's not pretend it's out of the goodness of their heart. It's this is all yeah. marketing. All of I it. Think, <laughs> I think you know, and and if we balance it out, there are extremes. There are the real smarmy ones, which mm -hmm. I'm not going to badmouth anyone, but you can just guess. Some of you know me, so you know. Yeah. There, I I don't I don't have a very big pool of influencers that I consider worthwhile ever listening to, but they are exciting they are entertaining um and different levels and then there's another side where they are trying to help but there is this illusion um that everything that's being talked about isn't paid for unless they disclose it right i do know of right. some influencers who who disclose 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 um some don't and some don't do everything which is worse not doing it or not doing everything. I throw it into the big box that says, you stink. You should disclose mm -hmm. everything yeah. if you're going to do it. And I think you guys can all see that list if you Google it, the polka dot, the dot list of marketing. I think it's in your article, is it not? Didn't you have the uh, yeah, um, no, a screenshot a of that a, in the article? I got a list so, of like 15 different, different things that can be done, each with different levels. So the first article outlines all that stuff. The, the the following articles, so I, I wrote one before the polka dot thing happened, and that's that's published. Uh, we haven't pushed it, but it's, it's published. Uh, that dives into the very first first bit of that list, talks about what they are, gives you examples, and gives you some prices and so forth, and talks about that. And then I'm going to continue going down through the list. I think we'll have another one out this week, maybe two. Um, and those are all the services that you can buy, we can buy, any you know, and get in get our stuff out of the mouths of influencers get our stuff onto you know uh, ne uh websites that talk about stuff get our stuff onto exchanges that uh list stuff or uh, there's a whole bunch of different services yeah. that are all that's possible right. and we talked about that that's that's why influencers do that that's why uh, news websites do that they don't do it because um they love crypto i mean probably started for that right but at sure. the end of the day they they have a work like for them it's a job yeah. right well the, so i think the course, misconception on youtube sorry to interrupt the, the misconception on youtube is there are a lot of youtube channels that are making money from youtube or from twitter right they're getting paid by 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 providing honest reviews 
right? They get a lot of viewers and then they get paid by YouTube, but get paid you by me. Ad rate, paid. By the ad so, by the ads, right. So exactly. if you're familiar a little bit with YouTube, you will see that it's not the model anymore, right? Like you have the ads and it's kind of a part of the revenue, but it's not so much. And I would assume that people in crypto are also, you know, greatly impacted by the demonetization and all yeah. that. Yeah, um, so that was, my, that was exactly my next point is like, yeah, uh, yeah, there are people who are making tons of money like on, on X and so forth. Uh, it's not very many. It's kind of like sports, like, you know, 1% make it. <laughs> um so there's a there's a there's a few i'm sure beast is making a ton of mr beast is making yeah. tons of money yeah right i uh, from, should have like 20 dollars cpm or something like that yeah, right, right so so from youtube itself i think he's got other in income streams but uh youtube itself is paying him a ton of money uh most of the crypto influencers that's not true and they're getting right. paid directly by companies to pay and look, them by projects. We're talking about yeah. Beast, right? I, I was watching a video recently and he was saying that um, he was getting a certain part from the video, but he also needs to do the ad rate in the middle mm -hmm. because otherwise he wouldn't be able to make the videos that he makes where he right. spent like so That's much true. money, right? right. And so yep. um, at the end of the day, it's, it's always what you get for what you spend, right? And mm -hmm. what are your goals? And I mean, those are um, in the market, they offer a service and that's, that's the way it is, right? We have to, we have to play the game with the rules that yeah. the, games have, I, yeah. the games have. I just, has. I just want our listeners to understand that what they're seeing is, is like this kind of vapid screen of what is really happening. Like, right. you know, they're getting paid somehow and the way they're getting paid are these crypto projects that you know, want to get out in front of the other ones or paying them. And, I think, you know, th I there's going to be a day where we need way, to do that with Divi. I think that there's a way, well, look, I don't think that there's anything wrong with having marketing or any nope. advertising done nope. for Divi. I'm not saying Divi. anything is wrong with it. Yeah. I don't think, yeah, so I'm, yeah, I don't think any of us would say that. It, it's about disclosure, I think, in some ways, when you're giving the appearance of being unbiased and you still may receive Look, I I am pretty confident on some hardware manufacturer, or excuse me, some hardware, we would call them influencers on YouTube, who will say, look, I was going to buy this. I'm giving my unbiased opinion, but they sent me one for free. And when you watch their video and they detail it and they hammer the tar out of it or they praise it, it's, it, it, you know, you can kind of get the feeling out of it. It is just mm -hmm. about the disclosure. Um I think using terms even like this is sponsored by, what's wrong mm -hmm. with that? I mean, an influencer Nothing. can say, hey, I'm sponsored by X. They yeah. make all of these things possible so I can talk about it. And yeah. then even say, hey, just because they sponsor me, you need to be a strong enough influencer. I guess maybe you got to be big enough to be able to say, if I don't like something they're doing, I will take it up with them. Sponsorships are, are just fine. I, I think believe that, it's that even be... required legally in um, in many areas. So yeah. 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 No, uh, again, sure. I encourage you to read those articles. They are, yep. I think Rob, you did a great job. The first he one did, is yeah. uh, generic about like presenting the whole thing. And then there will be a few, there will already be like um, the second one that is coming that is going into the shilling side, uh, Twitter retweets and yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know followers and all that. So it's a, it's a good aspect. And then there will be other ones. So I really encourage you to read those articles. And then after that, um, there will be another article which will summarize the whole strategy with the marketing, um, the website, exchange listing. And, um, and then we'll be able to have a vote for um, to see where where we want to go and what kind of strategy we want to yeah. we want can, to can approach we, with all that. Can we just sidetrack real quick to talk about how how we're gonna how we're gonna approach this because we had talked about in the past uh, about like okay marketing for this little thing let's raise the money for that and get it done and then this little thing and then it's kind of confusing if people are voting on four things at once so we that's right we kind of talked that we're gonna have two kind of two kind of efforts going. One is marketing and one is exchanges. Mm. And as we, I think the way we're going to do this is there's no doubt voting on anything. We're, we're going to ask, we're, we're going to try to accumulate money into these two kind of funds. And as we get to, we'll Buckets. put a roadmap of, of here are all the things that we would like to do. And obviously we put them in order of this is $1,000 and this is $50,000. And 
we'll when we hit the different thresholds, we'll have a vote for the thing. And the vote is, should we do this now or should we not? Um, Correct. And then if the, if the answer is not, then we'll keep accumulating till the next thing. And the at the next thing, we'll have a vote. Should we do this now or not? And we will keep doing that. So then that way we can if if the community wants to, we can get onto cheap exchanges. Uh, if the community wants to, we can do the telegram uh, kind of efforts uh, because that stuff is cheap. Um, but if the community wants to keep waiting and keep contributing for the bigger and bigger and better stuff, that's important. Um, so there's shitty exchanges and there's more decent exchanges and the price reflects that. There's there's crappy um, marketing. Why don't we call them do. small exchanges? No less well-known and then big exchanges. Oh, you just don't like my words. <laughs> yeah, right. I, 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 yeah, I think that's just because you you're nice. a small exchange doesn't you mean you're nice. crummy. So we'll talk about you're the just, exchanges after, new. but- Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll so get to exchanges in a second. About, but the same about this process, so I think yeah. that what, what would be the best is really to have this um, roadmap, you called it roadmap, so I'll yes. just reuse the term, where yes. we have a gauge and we have all the things that we could basically achieve with the milestone. And so what I would propose is to give um, like a month. And then after a month, we have a, co we have a, a vote if we keep going or if we do one, like we could, you know, propose two or three alternatives for what yes. we acquired. And then month, yeah. one of the alternative would be keep going, right? Yeah. So um, I think that's the easiest for people to follow because if there are like too many things it will be too complicated exactly and also, I agree. yeah and also i think that it's important to have some experience to mix and match those different packages right to mm -hmm. have like a, an effective strategy so i think it's better if we have you know a few of those packages that are proposed and mm -hmm. yeah so that that'll be the direction yeah. for for this part maybe yeah. we can so, yeah go ahead, go ahead. sorry uh, so I just want to wrap that up. I, I think so. We talked about marketing. Read the articles. You'll see some of the kind of almost the roadmap. Like we want to go. We'll have this, you know, this this kind of temperature scale of of like the different thresholds and what we can buy with it. You'll kind of see it in the first article. You'll read more about it in the second, third, fourth article. Uh, and then we're gonna have the same thing for DAO uh, for uh, not for DAO for exchanges. And so now we can actually talk about exchanges. Uh, so I should have that's right. So let's reverse that order. <laughs> yeah. So let's open the exchange yeah. topic. So first yeah. of yeah. all, um, somewhat of a bad news. Um, last episode went out on July second, and I think um, on J June thirtieth, MEXC started to impose KYC on everybody. Correct. So we knew. We knew it, it could happen and we knew it was most likely going to happen at some point, but we weren't expecting it so fast. So I think it will be a little bit on the back burner. I mean, we'll keep it there. It will be in those, um, you know, in this model that we just mentioned. So we, we will offer it, but I don't think it will, uh, it will be a priority for people because obviously it will mean that now US users will not be able to, to get access to it. However, we looked into other solutions, and I think that um, it's interesting to bring um, three, three different uh, examples in that conversation. And so one is LBank, one is Zegex, and the other one is non-KYC. So LBank is an exchange that is, um, I believe, 17 um, in, the, in the rank. Uh, let me check that. Um, yeah, 17, that's right. And so it is a pretty interesting exchange. It has been growing um, quite a lot the last year. Um, and we actually uh, started to have a contact with them. They have a non-KYC, like a 20 Bitcoin withdrawal without KYC. Um, so again, very important topic. They're 17th. So we can expect that at some point they will impose KYC. But right now, they seems to have a very open policy. And so... To be able to get there, we have um, listing fees and we have minimum liquidity requirement. And so the total to be able to reach there would be about $60,000. So that's about half. That's actually half of what uh, MEXC would yeah. cost, right? And then uh, there are two other exchanges which are apparently they're kind of associated. Maybe uh, you, can introduce, uh, you can introduce them, Voice. 
Yeah, you know, it was it was it was coincidental. It was uh what was it? It was Hersey who had mentioned it on Discord and it almost at the same time as we were producing the other video, um, I was hanging out in some other crypto communities. Most of you know I do do some support in other communities. And they were also mentioning those exchanges that were being mentioned. I have been in communication with their their listing person. It's quite a bit less expensive, uh, obviously, because they're smaller. You could say up and coming exchanges if we're going to be positive about it. And like Rob, um, no, I'm kidding, Rob. <laughs> you know, so so these exchanges, uh, the listing costs, um, just basic listings, and then getting the assets on there are are generally going to be about one one fifth, one yeah, one sixth of what it would have been. At L Bank, I think it's like ten grand, uh, ten thousand right. for like Zegex, um, but that includes you know the liquidity. Uh, that includes um, the market maker. Um, it includes so many other things because they're being aggressive. They're trying to to move up in their rankings. But you know you're talking about you're comparing us uh, an exchange of L Bank, which is ranked seventeen. Zegex is one fifty. The great thing about it is they have basic non-KYC levels. And so that makes it good. It just requires instead of a, a situation to where uh, if you want to trade with no KYC, where it's like 20,000, I think is what we were talking about with L Bank or something is your is your non-KYC amount. It's like 5,000 on Zegex. Um, so there is going to be some differences as these exchanges, their formats and their philosophies. Um, and then there's non-KYC, which is obviously in the name, non-KYC, an even smaller exchange. I think the teams are related um, from ZegX to, to uh, non-KYC. Don't quote me on that, but the themes look very similar. But now you're talking about 7,500. That includes liquidity. That includes market making. That includes all, all the things that, um, that, uh, that make it possible. Uh, we just have to be active on these exchanges. That means those who want to trade, um, those who want to buy need to go. And as I've always mm -hmm. done, I've always done one-on-one -on -one tutorials. So no matter what the community decides upon, whether we do land on, a, on an exchange like L Bank, or maybe we don't, maybe we land on another exchange, I will do videos, I will do walkthroughs, I'll make it easy for the newbies, I'll even make it easy for the experienced coiners. So there's no, no, there's no, what am I trying to say? Everything's a positive. We have opportunities. They will be coming. And I think so Niggs, you and I were talking about putting things into some sort of a, a, uh, a format that people can make decisions upon, not a DAO proposal, but a proposal, at least format for that kind of thing. So let's talk about the details, right? Because we we just throw the pricing and all that. But sure. I think it's interesting to actually talk about the context because people don't realize, right? We come with the MEXCA exchange. It's 120K. Um, I think the gate.io was proposed like more than a year ago and it was oh, yeah. like 250K, something like that. It was 200, and yeah. So now we're proposing those exchange, which is... 10k for one and 7500 for the other so yeah, the what are the differences is like what? five thousand dollars that's that's for their integration right that's so, right so the so the difference is that an exchange like mexe has two million visits per day and more than half a billion volume on the exchange right correct it is listed as uh, in the cmc ranking it is rank 11th and so that's that's the kind of thing that uh, makes it that expensive, right? So we're talking about L Bank. It is 17th, but it has 1.6 million visits per week. So Correct. it is also having a pretty good attendance and it has a little below half a billion volume per day. So it's still quite a bit exchange, right? Um, now, if you look into the ZEGEX and non-KYC.io, uh, non here you have a um, lot further Very exchange, smaller. right? So the ZEGX is 150. It just has uh, six, it was a little bit more than 6 million um, daily volume. And if you actually look at the pairs, most of the pairs are between 20 and 30K volume per day. So it is a very small exchange. Much right? smaller. Mm -hmm. Again, ranked 150, very small volume. But then the cost is only 10K, right? And then the Correct. other one, non-KYC is 
not even listed on coin market cap so this is the kind of things that makes that um, you get a lower price but as you can see it's still ten thousand dollar right for an exchange that is way down in the ranking not having much volume so um, this will be some questions that you will have to um ask yourself way. right if yeah. you want to get in those exchanges if you would use those exchange and and again i'll just remind that we have a sandex we have be true and those do offer conditions that are actually better than those right but we'll still be looking into those and potentially get new listing because it is it is good news it is um moving forward we need more exchanges but just attracting your attention that we do have other exchanges that actually have better stats than those and that are unfortunately not being used so much yeah yeah it, that's true i think the community will find something they they like or find something for whatever reason maybe not like they just out of habit use more and that's what happened with kucoin obviously we had other exchanges uh, uh, uh that we had at one time which had greater volume but the second we had kucoin the assumption is because it was higher that it was a better exchange that everybody stopped using everything else and if you just use one what 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 good is it to have these other exchanges well i will tell you it's not good to just have one exchange it's not good to just have all of your uh, volume going through x because as we know in crypto or in any business if you have one vendor that's supplying you with stuff and you rely upon all your orders going through that one vendor if anything happens with that relationship and in this case it's a relationship with a coin or a community um if anything happens with that vendor what happens well now you're if you're a retailer or you're a manufacturer and your supplier says nope now you're scrambling now you have nothing i think it's good that we have a range of exchanges but it's also good that if we don't get stuck in a rut and just consistently use one exchange we should investigate we should try we should buy other coins too we can go to other exchanges and try them and if it's an easy on ramp and easy is of course subjective but if it's no kyc which you know i like um then there might be some opportunities to at least find other potential little nuggets or little diamonds in the rough that might be out there but also use it for services that that you would be interested in maybe buying and trading and divvy and other other things in these smaller exchanges regardless of their overall volume today that's today uh you look at an exchange like non-kyc i'm not a fanboy over any of these exchanges but it's totally new it's i think it's less than a year old or maybe close to a year and so i know it's advertising it plans on getting on coin market cap sometime i think their written statement is q3 to q4 so that's about i think a little bit over a year that they've been around so they're moving and they're not shaking yet but they're moving um and l bank is a beast right i mean it's it's up there it's not and a beast those, like those kucoin or any of those other ones it's, not get kyc for a long time so it yeah. is also a play right so yeah. correct that's true the Good. bigger they get as they start moving up on that list that top 10 list even in that top 20 list you're going to be in the situation to where they're going to be kyc at some point even though l bank has promoted itself as such i would imagine that at some point it will be kyc and then you'll see certain restrictions coming as they get bigger and bigger and bigger i think you and i spoke about that neeks it's just it's just a natural progression that this yeah. happens it's the style yeah, yeah. of a sex cex yeah. exchange they start off really broad and allow anyone and then pretty soon as they get big enough they start tightening that hole that people that gate that people can go through and uh yeah and, and i think we blood. say it enough on exchange but i, I still have to bring that point Which, i wonder what that scott is ruling on chevron will do on us customers not being able to hold token because i yeah. doubt this is precise like precisely written in the law and yeah i don't know clear um 
um, understanding from the SEC. So it would be interesting to see that. Yeah, definitely. So somebody has to go to court, though. Oh I yeah. Hope it's not, you know, oh yeah. yeah. I don't. I definitely don't want it to be me. I'm sure you don't want it to be you. So <laughs> I'm sure there uh, are many Bitcoin millionaire who yeah. would be able to do that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so shall we wrap up? We got some questions. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we I have some we have questions from uh, and, uh, YouTube mainly, right? Some test avatar testing. <laughs> well, we'll let's start with that. Somebody named Busy Mountain said, "You know, see what <laughs> we can do here." So. Uh, oh, let's see. Let's you know, see. So he yeah, said, "Pirate, snowman, or comments. Sasquatch?" Yeah. So let's I mean, see I, what I have. I made my I made my yeah, tattoo guy dance. here. If you if you oh, want yeah. me to dance, I can dance the Macarena. <laughs> yeah, I think so Nate is... can probably do a, a pirate or a Sasquatch. <laughs> I can make I myself. Can, uh, um, let's let's just I got the. See I got here. the. I got. The, oh wait. Here I can do. Oh wait, you can't see me do this. Oh, you also small. have tattoos on your face, right? Yeah, I put the tattoos back on now. So yeah. there we go. So let's see here. Oop, I'm falling down. Let's make myself have <laughs> hair and a beard. This looks less like me. There you yeah. go. Look at that. Oh, I can be the now, copyright free uh, uh, Mickey Mouse. I'm, I'm very small. And now I can do this dance. <laughs> let's make myself look really old. There and, uh, we go. I can go fishing or fishing in my suit with my tattoos. You're fishing. Yeah, I'm fishing. <laughs> yeah. And I can do this thing, you know, whatever that is. I, I couldn't is even do that like in the me. 80s when I first saw it. <laughs> yeah. What is it? What is it? What, how did you get the how did you get the tattoos on your face? I put them on. Yeah. I just put the put tattoos on. on. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I have no uh, idea where to even find those. That's all right. Oh, right. a fax. Yes. Yes. Facts. Here's me at my here's me at my uh my dead Kennedy's show I saw. <laughs> Just keep it on oh, there. Oh, terrible! <laughs> I can do I can do things yeah. like uh, what's this? Here we go, birds. Oh, oh there we go. Look, I'm I got birds taller. flying in the background. Money, nice. <laughs> water bottles. For some reason, it says this is I can I, can, I can hook this up with a Twitch bot. Yeah. Warning. Yeah. Oh, nice. So, <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, these are very subtle. I don't like them. I don't know. That's good. Yeah. Okay, so, so we knocked that one out. We, yeah, we, so we... basically, I can do some motions, and I, I can change the way I look. Oh, Neeks is uh, a cat. Yeah. I had him hidden. Yes. He's like yeah. Simba. Yeah. Say I'm hi, Simba. Cat. Yes. So I, I've only made a few people. I got Tattoo Dude. I got, uh, you guys have seen this one, but you've never seen my pants. Um, this guy where that's I look true. like voice. You got skinny and jeans. Then, uh, yeah, so That's I scary. Speak. And then the guy you I was you never today. see my pants? Yeah. No, you're not wearing <laughs> pants. pants. You should put some pants. on. Uh, and then, of course, I can be any of these other people. Like, Are those uh, like you know. giant bombs you have on your chest there? They're, yeah, yeah. They're just for fun. I think there's video games like that. Yeah. Is that, is that <laughs> yeah, what it is? There's video games like that. Okay, <laughs> so that was enough fun. I had it. I don't really like the avatars like that. So <laughs> You don't? All right. Uh, gotta... What was another? Well, Divi, Busy Mountain asked another question. If you guys are done with messing with your avatars. Well, I got to get back to where I was. I'm now done. I'm... Okay. There. Is that close enough? <laughs> Is Divi going to mesh up with Thorchain and Komodo Atomic Dex? I think that I can broadly answer that with we're open to integrations with our own side chains and that interchain communication with any chain that wants to be open to the integrations of those opportunities. When we talk about the side chain opportunities, there are some things we think that will be better on our side chains that could still complement the philosophy of those chains and actually make those chains better. That's the whole kind of cool yeah, thing I, about it. So, I definitely think um, we need to kind of mention here, like when we get the sidechain thing going, right? The, it allows for a lot of people, or anyone, um, but also us, uh, you know, to create a bunch of utility for correct. Divi. Um, the difference, you know, the hard part there, not for not for Divi because we're going to integrate this, but the hard part is to get to connection to other chains. They have to change. Thing in their core um getting other projects to do that 
that's not the easiest thing to do. Correct. Um, and that and really, that's what the challenge is. We got to show how great it is. But, you know, got to get a lot of enthusiasm around this. Got to get some marketing, get some eyeballs on this. Show that this is the way to do things. One hundred percent. And then you know, and then the other people come come around uh, if they want to get on board. Then they can do. Then they can do it. I, I think and that, I think this is also a good opportunity to kind of define roles, right? So obviously, DV will look into having those partners and integrate into other chains. But I think it will also be something that will be mainly on our partner side, right? Correct. Because uh, our partner has a full strategy, which is going to seek those uh, different chains and potentially uh, have budget to uh, be able to help them integrate and all that. I mean, Correct. that's definitely part of their objective. And so obviously there will be some um, initiative from DV, but I don't think the main part will come from that, but instead from a partner and then will be integrated with all that. Um, but, but I guess more detail will follow, will follow later. Yeah, but, I agree yeah. with you. I agree with you. Mm, he was uh, to, next let me, go ahead you were going to read mr sean i think somebody were going to read mr sean i can read it so his question mr sean 1984 i think showing the desktop wallet would be helpful so people new to divi see what you're talking about maybe after the desktop wallet updates would be a better time but keep talking about the side chains how they work and are different is there, there's a question in here somewhere i see one okay uh i was wondering how easy it would be for other blockchains to adopt which we just mentioned tech we just talked about that yep yeah and if you believe that this is direction utxo blockchains will take let me just take that real quick before yes. i go to the rest of this is because the biggest problem i think with utxo blockchains is the inability to show utility other than being like bitcoin um and i think value transfer for, yeah so I, you know, Dash tried to get their master nodes to do things. Um, most other, you know, Pivx, same thing. Uh, but I think fundamentally getting really good utility out of UTXO blockchains is exceedingly difficult um, or requires some sort of trust step. That's what this technology fixes. And I think once they see it, once we deploy it, uh, I think that's what will you know, attract them. And that's the way UTXO blockchains will want to go because they, they all share this one limitation. That's, that's right. But it's that. not limited yeah. to UTXO. It's However, right. they are they are the ones who will benefit the most because yes. basically right now they it's not in their interest to be anything else than just a currency. So for extended utility they definitely yeah. they will definitely benefit the most from our uh, right, offer exactly. uh, regarding the desktop wallet um, comment. I'll actually uh, go further than that. I think it's more about images in general. Having uh, something else than just our avatars, we definitely think about that. We, we would love to have that, but currently we just we just don't have the time to uh, do this post production. Um, hopefully, we'll get there <laughs> at some point. But let's I'll talk about who does post production. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, because that's all, that's Neeks doing all that. Neeks is doing it. He's that's doing right. it. So let me rephrase that. On, I on, don't have enough time. Yeah. <laughs> you're doing it on your personal no, time. Let's just yes. make sure everybody yeah. understands that you're doing yes. it. It's part of something you're. Yeah, that's I, fine. I, I it's not too necessarily complete, but, you're enjoying doing it, but you know that's that's something you're undertaking. Nobody else knew how to do it, but you self-educated. But it takes forever, even though we produce these all together. You piece these things together, meaning that you'll take different streams, different audio tracks. I have three tracks. You have three tracks. Rob has three tracks. If we have a guest, it's three tracks. <laughs> you're making that's it more many tracks, and you're merged. <laughs> I'm just no. I, I'm. I'm. I know you don't one like track to say, per person. No. You, well, there's a video. I know, there's but video, we all audio. have. Yeah. We all have multiple tracks for each other right. because there's different recording qualities. It's about keeping it consistent, and you merge. Let me just compliment you, please. Thanks. You do all the hard work, and I mean it's a lot of work to pull all this stuff together. David, who also uses the same software in the community, can stress, if he listens to this, how much work you're putting into this, it's massive. And it takes a lot of time, and it takes you days and days and days. And sometimes even the segments 
takes days of cutting them up. I help at a, at a much lower level, which means I help get things up to YouTube. I'm doing the lazy stuff. I'm like making sure the markers and he even produces those, the time, the time spots. All I do is format stuff and upload it. That to me is like the late, I'm like, the, I'm just pumping gas. That's all I'm doing. He's building out the car. So let me just leave it there. Neeks deserves a lot of compliments. He deserves a lot of pats on the back because he's doing all this himself. <laughs> let's let, let's move on. Thank you. Yeah. I, I know apologize you don't like it. for this I know you segment don't like about it. me. So <laughs> for, regarding the the illustration, I'd love to have that, but right now it's just not possible. But we'll definitely think about that in the future. I would agree with you, um, Sean, that um, <laughs> we that we need to wait for the refresh. However, I don't think the desktop water, even if it's honestly, it fits all the utility that you need. Um, it's not a great product to advertise. It doesn't look um, appealing, it right? It needs and, a and refresh. We need, we need it to look a little bit more appealing for that. Um, however, yeah, we, we will definitely have more uh, graphical content in um, future videos but right now we will remain with the avatar it can be listened to in audio that's probably the intent the intention um but yeah at some point we'll get there we just we just don't have the resource right now exactly just more so people move, also yeah, funding there you the go next one um this is from sam hale f s four five four seven nine yeah um <laughs> he says i greatly appreciate the divi updates and dude that's why we do these uh you know and it's great if people can tell us again we really we're not necessarily looking for positive uh reinforcement but it would be better uh for me <laughs> but just like <laughs> what we're doing right what we're doing wrong like it's important to, just to know that we're not speaking into a black hole and these kind of comments really do help um can you walk through your timeline and comment on your effort <clears throat> um i think he's talking about like from here out because he says i'm definitely interested in your marketing strategy and who is and the, and who is and the objectives of using this market maker so i think um and then third and fourth quarter of this year is huge with marketing and rolling out product um and value with the cycle of crypto. We totally agree. We need to strategize on getting to other crypto shows in the third quarter. I believe Rice Crypto is a Divi fan. You might start with yeah. him. Uh, so this is more of comments than can questions. I can I can yeah. I make a statement there? You know about yeah, Rice course. Crypto. I do know Rice. Um, I've helped Rice. Rice knows me. Obviously, if you're interested in any one of us being on any show, reach out to your influencer that you know mention us we will happily i can't even gush how happy i would be to speak about the future to speak about the the opportunities that will be coming in the future i'd be happy to join rice i don't know about rob and neeks if you guys would be happy to join i you know he's one if you have others i'm happy to join anyone um, anytime. And, and I always enjoy that. And it's been a, a little bit of time since I've been on shows. So I look forward yeah, to it. And it might be something that we didn't have initially in our list. That, that's actually yeah. a very good point. And we'll, we'll try, we'll try to make those connections. Regarding the strategy for Q3 and Q4, that's, that's basically exactly what we're trying to do with the website, the marketing, uh, the exchange, that that's pretty much the way um, mm -hmm. all the coins basically work, right? We need to initiate the movement so that people see that there is something and they actually see that we have a new offer, we're offering those side chains and we're offering like a new uh, direction that would benefit the whole industry. I mean, unless there is some movements, they they won't even read about it. Even if we have you know, even if we were telling them that we will give them gold bars, right? They need to see things moving. And so that's, um, that's the way our strategy will, uh, will go for um, the next few months. And I, yeah. yep, I, I believe it is uh, critical for Divin. And here we go again. Another one. Storm Rider. Appreciate the videos, guys. Great work. See, we love it. Nice. <laughs> <It's really> nice. <laughs> no, I only took the positive ones. Us. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> you only took the positive one. <laughs> 
on the side chains decks topic topic we have uh, got a particular chain in mind to make it the first pairing or could we have a polling campaign on twitter to get some buzz going uh and community so um there is a chain in mind we're not going to mention it um and after that absolutely we can work on uh how to uh, uh add uh kind of pairs or create liquidity pools uh, with Divi and other chains. Um, so just again, one limitation, though. Um, yeah. While we would appreciate the community uh, talking about the, coin, the coins that they would want us to meet with and try to look into a solution, at the end of the day, it is it is kind of a complex thing, right? It's not because yeah. people voted on a Twitter poll that uh, this project is not going to be integrated, right? It's a little bit more complex than that. Uh, it's a lot of talk, a lot of technical decisions so it's not like we can just do a poll and be like hey yeah we'll integrate that coin right after so right. It, it, we yeah. will think about how the community can be involved in that but it's not as easy as just a listing and we can just list the coin right yeah. without without even talking with them yeah don't forget in order to be on a dex that uses this technology it's the same problem they have to be compatible with it so that's, that's right it's not just That's, you know a voting or anything like that. They have Niggs to will, change Niggs their will, core. Neegs will put like bamboo under my fingers in a second, but that's the other benefit of of at least using blockchains that are out there. I'm pausing a little bit because I know he's going to get me. Is is the fact that as long as the, most of these chains that we're talking about in the beginning were open for anyone, and the the partner is open, absolutely extremely open for anyone in any style of chain is if there's a re relative history we're talking about genealogy divi is a bitcoin genealogy other chains that have a bitcoin genealogy may see there's my qualifier i've got to be careful with neeks may be easier to integrate than ones that are not right. um and so that's the benefit of dexes I believe that's my own personal opinion. That's not a technical opinion. That 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 it'll be easier to make sure that we start with communities, although not not limited to, and of course the partner the same way, that they have that that similar lineage, similar lineage. Now Neeks can of course be consider the bamboo received. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can take it. No, it, there are some aspects that definitely make UTXO blockchains and blockchains that share the same roots as us um, potentially easier candidate. However, we also have information that seems to say that um, it shouldn't look be at on a uh, that more complicated case. for EVM yeah. models and all that. So Yeah. Yeah. One-on-one. -on -one. Look at each, each one yeah. individually. Right. So you got one more. Uh, we got one more here. Uh, really? Again, it's Mr. Sean, 1984. Second <laughs> one. Really enjoying these updates, you see. I, you, you did choose all the good ones. <laughs> uh, in the new them. format. Yeah, I'm interested in, to find out more of how the existing partners within the e Divi ecosystem plan on using the sidechain technology and how it would change and evolve how they work. Our sidechains Part, our sidechains partners planning on developing sidechains for businesses that take advantage of some of the low-hanging fruit, uh, e.g. building a DAX or an EVM, or do they have bigger plans? Um, that, I, let's see, that's a little hard to say. Um, we are definitely going to have uh, uh, meeting, not meetings, uh, kind of, uh, we have uh, updates with uh, our partners. We're, gonna we're planning on having them here on this kind of show. Uh, we've already had one. Uh, I uh, we're, we're releasing that or has it been released uh, no no it hasn't been released yeah, yeah so so we're releasing that one that'll be the first one um and that one um that probably won't be something that's particularly something that you use a sidechain for but in the future that's definitely something we'll be asking them as we as we move along from one to the next that's right i think i think it's important to mention that for partners so of course, we have the sidechain partners, so let's make the difference immediately. Mm -hmm. Partners that are not the sidechain partners, for them, it's a little bit early, right? It's a little bit early to um, imagine the kind of use case that they could have on sidechains. But obviously, when it will become um, 
more live when we will have like a beta out and all that they will be able to test things and think about how they want to leverage this technology right now the partners that we have now will obviously do our best to keep working with them and develop what we have but we will also look for other partners right the side chain the side chain adventure um should interest like should attract developers from um currently smart contracts or taxes or whatever use case you have currently on um mono blockchain or all in one blockchains or on others uh, closed sidechain networks like you have on cosmos and so those people basically would have the opportunity to have a lot more audience now developing on our technology because it's fully interoperable right so it is um i think the best um the best advantage of this model is that everybody is basically benefiting from migrating to that so i believe that our partners and i do believe that dv labs or maybe decryption lab with josh would be the one more inclined to be leveraging that technology later but i think for now it's a little bit too early regarding the yeah. businesses i think this is um what we're trying to explain with all those side chains right um the side chain doesn't need um native assets right and a native asset is kind of a it's kind of a burden for a company a company that doesn't want to um you know deal with the crypto um speculation and volatility and all that a business that would just want to provide a service the side chain is the best for them right like they really have this model where they can put their business model on it um get the fees out of the service that they provide and and it's basically like a normal business exactly like they operate outside of blockchain so it is interesting there are also some technical advantages which allow some hybrid chain some um more private chains and all that i think we talked about it in the first few videos so yeah definitely sidechain do offer a um, whole set of advantage and opportunities that the current system doesn't have and and i'm sure our partners will find a way to leverage it it's just a bit early for now it is but it's an exciting early we have right. a whole lot of positive speculation uh, it, it's also unfair because we've seen this technology so if uh if i sound excited at times which is what i was expressing about being more than happy to be elsewhere speaking about it at least from that third party perspective um but from a first person perspective and seeing things that we can do um yeah it's exciting it's exciting that's great I think we went through all the question, didn't we? I think we did. Mm -hmm. I think we, this was a long one. That's right. It was. Um, we did have a pretty heavy uh, news part. Um, so I I kind of pushed that. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's good. We, the, we have, so we can talk about um, sidechain use case and all that. We will keep bringing some. Um, it's just that if we do that every two weeks we kind of be running around in circle pretty quickly so um, that's why maybe bringing more news and try to give one or two topics that are related related to uh, dv and the side chains and not have like four or five topics in the same videos would be more appropriate let us know what you think guys um we're doing those videos for you so really let us know and, yeah, and we yeah. are doing it for you. We're doing it for you, the greater community. This is a foundation effort. This is all of us here together, bringing news, bringing information, bringing you know the uh, information about where we want as a community to go as a future with utility. Make sure that as you watch this again on YouTube, you got that little thumbs up icon. Make sure you watch it. Make sure you give us your input. Make sure that you put comments on it. Make sure you thumbs up. Obviously, if you really think it's a thumbs up, I want you to uh, make sure you thumbs up. And also, keep your notifications on. If you find these long form ones too long, nobody here is offended by that. These are long form <laughs> videos. 
Again, Neegs will do the hard work in separating them all up into what's called segments. I will also go back and I will rename all of those Divi updates that are in the segments folder. I'm going to rename them to Divi segments. Therefore, you can quickly identify what you want to share, what you want to research, what you want to fill your brain with so you can share with others. The Divi segments will have those and they will be titled by that segment in that specific episode. And then that's easier to consume because that's like three to 15 minutes in most of those little segments you've got. And you're sharing, as I recall, I think you're sharing little even shorts on Twitter, right? You're sharing some 20 seconds or one minute little little shorts every once in that's a while. Right, that's right, that's uh, right. It's 60 second maximum. 60 I got, seconds, yeah. I got trapped with that a few times with a one minute, <laughs> 10 second, and then it doesn't recognize these at a short. And then I, I hate it anyway. Uh, <laughs> you hate it. At least, I at least didn't admit it. release a short since I think a couple of weeks. I didn't really have time to work on that. The shorts are actually um, the ones who take me the most time. Um, oh really? By oh, far. Really? So this is my call out. Anybody things. can make shorts. Anybody That's can right, take a piece. Look of any I really video. Wanted, I really wanted to give some content about what I think was missing. And so I'll keep, I'll keep doing that until uh, hopefully there are some more people. Like I would love to have more people to, um, you know, give the motivation so that they can try yeah. their own thing. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Until yeah, then, I, I'll we... keep doing that. But no shots for now. Probably next week or the one after, I'll start to work on it again. I think that's what, uh, I think I make it okay so people can uh, download the videos or at least share the videos. So that should also allow them to to be able to take some of that video and then repurpose it again. Feel free to do that. We, we, we hope you do that. So of course that would be nice. So like, thank, you know, subscribe, comment on our faces to create videos. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you could do that. Sounds good. Okay, guys. That was good. All right. Talk All right, everybody. Later. Enjoy Maybe. your evening, your day, your morning, wherever you are. Thanks so much. Bye, Bye. everyone.